perfect. And we have Judy with us, Juliana, Margie. Hey guys, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, we're talking about leaky gut syndrome today. And woohoo, woohoo. Woo <laughs> Let me, uh, let's see here. Let me see if we actually are live. Are we live? I, I, I'm looking on my Facebook right now. Okay, we're looking on Facebook to see if we're live. All right. Oh, there you are. Because we never Let's know if we're live. Let's see here. Oh, yeah. Here we are. <laughs> Very cool. Good morning, Patricia. Good morning, Mimi. Good morning, Barb. All right. Oh, folks are coming on Zoom. That's pretty cool. <laughs> We're talking about leaky gut today. And I should pull up like my big computer here so I can see the live thing on Facebook as well uh, with that. All right. Help talks. We are talking about leaky gut today. And do you guys know what it means to have a leaky gut? <laughs> do you guys know what it means to have a leaky gut? You can either uh, unmute yourself and chat if you're on Zoom, or you can uh, put in the chat box if you're on Facebook live with us. What does it mean to have a leaky gut? Um, very cool. Let me see here. I want to show you. Oh, you can't see me. <laughs> I got a laptop with a bigger <laughs> computer at the back. And then I got my iPhone. So it's like there's three versions of us going on right now. <laughs> You're a busy man. <laughs> what does it mean to have a leaky gut? Have anyone heard of the terms leaky gut syndrome? Good morning, Christy. Anyone ever heard of the term leaky gut syndrome? Juliana, Mimi, Margie, have you guys heard of it? Or is this I've heard of it? I've heard of it, and um, uh -huh. I don't know if it's sort of related to an IBS issue or probiotic issue. I, so I don't know. That's what I'm here to To figure out, out huh? <laughs> okay, great. That's what I figured too. Oh, yeah? Okay. What do you guys, what about you guys on Facebook? Um, what have you heard about leaky gut? Anything in particular about leaky gut? So, so let me ask you this. What is the purpose of our gut? What is the purpose of our gut? What is the function of our gut? Tweed Davis says bacteria leaking from intestines. Ooh, that sounds nasty. <laughs> Possibly. What is the purpose? I'm taking of a uh -huh. weak, weak sphincter at the top of the gut with it from the esophagus. Okay, it starts at the esophagus, yes. So our, our gut starts at the esophagus and and it goes all the way down. It starts at the mouth actually. Your gut starts at your mouth. And it goes all the way down your esophagus. It goes into your, your stomach, right? And then from the stomach it goes to the small intestine. And then from uh from there it goes to uh, the large intestine, the uh and then your rectum, and then it goes out the other end. Right? That is uh, that is your entire gut from from one end to to the other end. That's your entire gut. And so so what is the purpose of the gut? Uh, well, we all know that the gut does uh, what digest food, right? So that's pretty obvious. And so the gut is a, a site to digest food. Uh, but besides digesting food, did you know that the gut does a few other things besides digestive food? Does anyone know what the other stuff that the gut does besides food digestion? There's four things that the gut does. 
we only know of one, which is uh, most of us know about the digestion of food. The and then there's all the microbes. Ooh, that, some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, keep going. Microbes. <laughs> right. We so you have basically uh, other things living with you besides you, right? So your gut is lined with uh, microbials, bacteria, virus, fungus, right? All those bugs uh, basically live with you in your gut. As a matter of fact, did you know that uh, of all the bugs that live with you, of all the bacteria, of all the bacteria that lines your body, that lives in your body, did you know that 90% of the bacteria lives in your gut? 90% of all the bacteria that lives in you lives in your gut. Pretty, uh, Pretty freaky, huh, when you think about it? Did you know that of all the immune system cells that are with you, right, all the immune system fighter cells that, you know, the white blood cell and all that, that lives in your body, 70% of your immune system is in your gut. Why is 70% of your immune system in your gut? Does anyone know? Why is 70% of your immune system in your gut? You can, uh, you can either unmute and, and talk about the answer or you can type it in the chat box if you're on Facebook. Why is 70% of your immune system in your gut? All right, guys, <clears throat> this is like Jeopardy uh, Wednesday. <laughs> Good morning, Susan. Well, 70% of your immune system is in your gut because 90% of the bacteria is in your gut. How's that? <laughs> your immune system is there defending itself against the bacteria in case one of the bacteria get through the bad guys, right? So really, it's no real jeopardy. It's just really common sense. The, the immune system hangs out where the bacteria hangs out because it needs to defend itself in case one of those bacteria, which could be, you know, one of the bad guy bacteria gets through. But did you know that the majority of the bacteria that lives with you are probably not bad bacteria? They're, they're probably not bad guys. Uh, there are good bacteria that live with you. What do we call the good bacteria? Does anyone know? What do we call the good bacteria? Probiotics. Yes, probiotics, <laughs> right? Probiotics, they're, they're pro-us, right? Pro-humans, they're probiotics, what we call the good bacteria. Uh, probiotics, yeah, they're, they're good. They, they do good things. And they're, they live there for a reason with you because they're actually, they actually do good things. So, so there's good bacteria that live with you and there's bad bacteria that lives with you. Hola, my... Sister Hung just got on to uh, tantalize me as I give a lecture, right? And so anyway, um, so we have bacteria that live with us. Our gut has four functions. Function number one is to digest food. Function number two is to break down toxins. To break down toxins. Did you know that, uh, that your gut and the, actually the good bacteria that lives with you breaks down toxins. Uh, the toxins come to us through food, through you know, maybe bad food, just stuff that shouldn't be there. Um, so that's function number two. Function number three uh, of our gut is to produce vitamins. Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, what produces vitamins, guys, what helps to produce vitamins is the good bacteria. The good bacteria. Does anyone know a vitamin that is produced by the good bacteria in our gut? Anyone know a vitamin that is produced by the good bacteria in our gut? Is it vitamin C, vitamin A, or some kind of vitamin, right? 
So good bacteria produces not just vitamins, but it produces other hormones that our body requires as well. But the vitamin that we've all heard of is vitamin B12. Anyone heard of vitamin B12 before? Does anyone know what vitamin B12 does for your body? Like if you don't have enough vitamin B12, what, you know, what kind of symptoms do you get, right? What do you feel or not feel without vitamin B12? Anyone know? Vitamin, Tired. Yes, vitamin B12 deficiency uh, can cause chronic fatigue, tiredness. Vitamin B12 deficiency can cause numbness and tingling of your feet. It starts in your feet and it kind of travels up. We call it uh, B12 deficiency uh, induced neuropathy, right? Polyneuropathy uh, with that. Vitamin B12 deficiency, did you know that it causes memory loss? Did you know that vitamin B12 deficiency leads to a dementia? Uh, with that. Cindy says energy. Hey, Cindy, yes. Uh, Patricia says rain fog, like, like there's a lot of rain that's coming down that makes it foggy. Is that right, Patricia? Or, uh, or did you really mean brain fog? <laughs> uh, with that. Uh, Twee says energy. That's correct. The lack of vitamin B12 uh, leads to fatigue. So vitamin B12 is produced in your gut. It's produced by the good bacteria in your gut. Pretty crazy, isn't it? There's one more, there's one more function of uh, your gut. Anyone know? One more function of your gut and the gut bacteria that lives in your gut. Uh, the good bacteria. The, the fourth function of your gut is that it creates a barrier lining to protect your gut and your body, right, from everything outside your body. So the gut is the one long tube that is a barrier, right? So everything inside your gut, like the food and all that stuff, is could be toxic and bad. And the gut barrier, the lining of that gut, which is protected by the good bacteria, the good bacteria protects the lining of the gut, right? From, so from the rest of the, the body, right? The inside of the gut from the rest of your body to protect it. So it's kind of like a, a wall of a castle, right? Like a wall of a castle. So how many of you guys have seen, uh, I don't know, Lord of the Rings? How many of you guys have seen Lord of the Rings? What are the names of the castles in Lord of the Rings? Does anyone remember the name of the castles in Lord of the Rings? Right, the two towers. The two towers where the humans ran and hid from the orcs, and they hid behind this big castle called Helm's Deep. You guys remember Helm's Deep? Okay, never mind. I'm the only Lord of the Rings fan here. Okay, what about... Uh, what is that big castle, uh, Jose, in uh, Games of Thrones, right? In uh, the Kingdom of the North, there's like a big castle that protects the, uh, the humans from, uh, from the shadow, dark warriors, the zombies outside of it, right? I don't uh, know. I haven't watched that. <laughs> anyone here Games of Thrones fans? Okay. I'm like in the wrong Zoom group here. <laughs> the wrong Zoom group here, right? I'm just kidding, guys. Right, those in Games of Thrones, there's this huge castle uh, that protects the humans uh, from the bad guys, and so, so this castle, whether you're in Games of Thrones or you, whether you are uh, in Lord of the Rings, the castle has a castle wall, right? And on that castle wall, the, the purpose of the castle wall is to keep the bad guys out, like the orcs or the zombies, right? Your gut lining is the castle wall that keeps out, that keeps out everything bad in your gut, right? The toxins, the bad stuff, the bacteria, right? The bad bacteria from, from the rest of your body, right? So that castle wall is the gut lining. And, and every castle has soldiers on top of it, right? Every castle have like soldiers on top of it guarding the castle. Right, in uh, Games of Thrones is the men of the Night Watch, right? In uh, 
in Lord of the Rings, it's the elves and the humans, right? Standing on top of the, the castle wall to, uh, to protect the castle. The castle, the men guarding the castle wall in your gut is your good bacteria. Making sense so far, guys? The, the men guarding the castle wall in your gut is the good bacteria that lives with you. Uh, let me know if that makes sense to you guys. Uh, type in yes if that makes sense, right? Castly rock, yes. Castly rock. Type in yes if that makes sense. Juliana gets it? Okay, good. Hey, good morning, Alex. Good morning, Loanne. Good morning, Linda. Um, so uh, I'm glad you like that comparison, uh, Judy. So, so your body, your gut has the gut lining. The gut lining is the castle wall that protects your body, which is the castle, right? On top of the gut lining, on top of the castle are the soldiers that protect the castle. That's your good bacteria, okay? You're, now, right behind, right behind the castle wall, you have soldiers protecting it as well, just in case the castle wall gets breached, right? If the castle wall gets breached, you have soldiers behind the castle wall, and that's your immune system. That's where 70% of your body's immune system is, ha is hanging around behind the castle wall, right behind the gut lining just in case the castle wall gets breached. So that is your gut, right? That is your gut. It has more than one function. It doesn't just digest food. Food digestion is one thing. Breaking down toxins is another thing. Protecting the lining of the gut, right, is, is the third thing, which is your good bacteria. And the good bacteria also is required for, to make vitamins certain vitamins and, and hormones is required. Uh, you need the good bacteria for that. So your gut is so more important than just digestion. So my question to you is this. My question to you is this. What can cause damage to the gut wall? What can cause damage to your gut wall? Right? What is it that we can do to our bodies to damage our gut wall? If our gut wall is so important to do all these things, right? Our gut health. What can cause your gut to be unhealthy? Allergy. Uh, okay, ulcerations. Ooh, yeah. Well, ulcers can cause, uh, is a breach in the wall. Yes, stomach ulcers, right, is a breach in the wall. I heard allergies. Uh, yes, uh, such as food allergies, right? Did you know that food allergies is basically your your gut wall, right, or your gut lining not doing its job when you have food allergies? It means that the, the food stuff is leaking through, creating a an allergic allergic response to your body, like uh, gluten sensitivity. How many of you guys have heard of gluten sensitivity, um, or um, celiac sprue, right? Celiac disease. Patricia says too much acid. Alex says chemicals. Cindy says uh, poor nutrition. Yes, all correct. Uh, good morning, Carlos. Carlos Mendoza is here from SCAN. Awesome. And so, so your gut wall, right? There are many things that can damage it. Uh, the first thing is food, eating the wrong food. Uh, eating food that uh, is not healthy. Your, uh, your gut is designed to uh, to digest food uh, but we can often throw in a wrench into the digestive process that that makes it harder for your gut to do its job right your gut is like a machine right your gut is a machine and that machine uh, simply digests food anytime you eat how many meals do Americans have a day guys how many meals do Americans have a day? You can uh, answer in the chat box, uh, or you can unmute and answer. How many meals do Americans have a day? Good morning, Letty. They eat all day long. They eat all day long. <laughs> yeah. So we got breakfast, right? We got breakfast. We got uh, lunch, and we have dinner. 
Um, I see in the chat somebody wrote five small meals. Okay, okay. We have a, is it just breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or do we eat in addition to that? Carlos eats four times. Cindy only eats three times? Okay. Patricia eats four times. All right. What about snacks? How many of us have a snack between breakfast and lunch? Anybody here on Zoom have a snack between breakfast and lunch? Right? So some folks have a, a snack between breakfast and lunch. How many of us have a snack between lunch and dinner? <laughs> I hear chuckling, right? How many of us have a snack between lunch and dinner? I do. I have a snack between lunch and dinner. How many of us uh, have a snack after dinner? Margie says, yes. Alex says, depends on what people can afford, right? They can afford junk food for sure, right? So Cindy says, uh, I eat five times, but most people only eat three times. I see. So a lot of folks, a lot of Americans, I don't know about Canadians, right? Alex, you have to tell me about Canadians here. We got Canadians on our chat here. I don't know about Canadians, but Americans have uh, breakfast. They have uh, a meal after breakfast sometimes, like a snack. Um, good morning, Crystal. They have uh, lunch, that's three. Sometimes we have afternoon lunch, right? Or afternoon snack, and then we got dinner. And then sometimes, you know, Crystal says she has tea after dinner, right? Uh, so that's like, Americans can eat five or six times a day, can't we? We can totally eat five or six times a day. And, and if your gut is a machine, right? If your gut is a machine that has to go to work, to digest your food. Let me ask you, how often is our gut working with the American diet? How often is this machine working to digest your food with the American diet? All day long. Jose says all day long. Alex says we are pigs, oink, 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 right? All day long. By the way, uh, Crystal Lynn Bodine, welcome. Uh, I, I'm i saying, I'm shouting a, a special uh, hello to Crystal here because she is one of our uh, survivors of, uh, of COVID and uh, is here with hanging out with us here today uh, with that. All the time, huh, Patricia? Yes. We eat all the time. So let me ask you this. If you had a factory, right? If you were the boss and you had a, a factory and you were working and your factory was working and that factory was forced to work all day long, what happens to that factory over time, guys? What happens to the factory over time? If it was it's working. It's tired. Runs out. It burns out. It gets tired right it gets tired so so this factory has to work during breakfast it has to work during uh morning snack it has to work during lunch it has to work after lunch snack and then it has to work again during dinner time and then it has to work after dinner you know cookies ice cream dessert right your factory your gut works all day long that's right crystal it, it works because it starts to burn out over time and it slows down. It doesn't work very effectively, right? It starts to burn out. Think about your gut lining, right? Think about this castle and it's forced to work all day long. What's happening to it is that it starts to burn out. It starts to work inefficiently where it starts to lose its effectiveness in digesting your food. And then on top of working all day long, we throw in a wrench very often to the machine. What is that wrench call when you throw in a wrench to make it work even harder? Does anyone know specific foods that are toxic, that are toxic to our gut and to our body? What are some toxic food, guys, to our gut and our body? You can uh, unmute yourself and give us the answer, or you can type it in. Judy says, 
Judy says, I saw sugar, I saw wheat. Right? Yes, sugar is toxic to our body. Definitely. Why is sugar toxic to our gut? Does anyone know? Does anyone know why sugar is toxic to our gut? Good morning, Chris is here. Yes, Crystal, sugar. Sugar is toxic to our gut because sugar feeds the bad bacteria. <laughs> sugar feeds the bad bacteria. Coffee is fine. <laughs> Processed foods, eating processed foods, eating foods that has, uh, what do you call it, preservatives and chemicals is like throwing a wrench into our machine, into our factory, into our gut, right? Cecilia, inflammation, yes, 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 sugar causes inflammation, Sh right? Sugar, and you guys have been to many of my inflammation lectures, I'm sure, before uh, with that. Does that include natural sugars? Natural sugars is much better than, uh, than white sugar uh, in general. Yes, like eating a fruit I'm less concerned with than eating a, a candy bar or, or white sugar, right? Eating sugar, eating processed foods, um, eating foods with preservatives, is throwing a wrench into this machine. When you throw a wrench into the machine, the machine breaks down, doesn't it? The machine breaks down. When the machine breaks down, it's kind of like the soldiers at the top of your castle dying, being lost, and being shot down. When you eat food that you should not eat, it's like shooting an arrow from the outside and shooting down the soldiers guarding your castle, right? Shooting down the, the soldiers guarding your castle. Patricia says coconut sugar with a question mark. Coconut juice is fine. <laughs> I love coconut juice. But, the, but does it make sense to you that there are certain types of nutrition and diet in our lives that destroys that destroys and hurt the wall that protects our body that destroys the gut lining that destroys the soldiers which is the good bacteria guarding your gut right does that make sense to you guys that there are certain foods that we eat and certain things that messes up the health of our gut uh, type in yes if i'm making sense uh, otherwise, I can further explain that to you. You guys on Zoom, does that make sense to you guys? Uh, that there are certain foods that destroy the health of our gut. It's like throwing a wrench. Margie, good, okay. It's like throwing a wrench into the machine. Every time we eat processed food, sugary food, uh, preservatives, things of that sort, right? Um, red meat. Did you know red meat? is not uh, healthy for our gut lining uh, with that. And it's not because it's just red meat. It's because when we eat beef, when we eat beef, it is really the stuff that the cow eats. It's really the stuff that we pump into our cows, right? Uh, with that. What do we pump into our cows, guys? What do we pump into our cows? Does anyone know? Steroids. Yes. Why would we pump steroids into our cows? Make what do we do? Fat and juicy. Fat and juicy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I love a fat and juicy steak, medium yep. rare, right? I love a fat and juicy steak. Yes, aspartame. Yes, yes, fake sugar, right? So, yes, we. Antibiotics. antibiotics. Yes, we pump antibiotics into our cows. And why do we do that? Why do we pump antibiotics into our cows? Does anyone know? To, to prevent infection. To prevent infections. Yes, hormones. That's right. All right. And so, guys, when we are eating beef, when we are eating red meat, right, we're not just eating red meat. We're eating hormones. We're eating antibiotics. 
we're eating everything the cow ate. So if the cow ate grass and the grass was sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, that's what you're eating, right? And so into your gut, as it's digesting your, your beef, your hamburger, your hot dog, your, your steak, into your gut, we are throwing wrenches. The wrenches of antibiotics, the wrenches of hormones, the wrenches of pesticides, right? The wrenches of uh, aspartamine, of fake sugar. As we are doing that, it is like shooting arrows at the soldiers guarding the wall of your castle. And if you are losing soldiers on your castle wall, what is going to protect your wall from the bad bacteria living in your gut? Right? If we are consistently shooting arrows and shooting down the good soldiers, the good bacteria of your walls, what is going to protect, right? What is going to protect the wall of your castle, your gut lining, when the soldiers are dying? Taking probiotics. <laughs> Taking probiotics. <laughs> yes. How many of you guys have taken an antibiotic before and had some kind of GI side effect? No. Type in yes if you've had that. How many of you guys have taken an antibiotic and had some kind of GI side effect? like diarrhea, stomach pain, stomach aches, right? Rashes, from Margie says yes, right? Why do you have GI side effects? You have GI side effects because the antibiotics destroys not just the bad bacteria, but it also destroys the good bacteria, right? So when you're taking an antibiotic course, you're destroying the good soldiers, protecting the wall, which is why you get GI side effects. Does that make sense? Because if part of the reason, if part of the function of your gut is digestion and the breakdown of toxins, when you take antibiotics, you're destroying the good bacteria right? You're destroying the ability of your gut to do its job, which is to digest food and to break down toxins, which is why you have GI side effects, which is why you have diarrhea and stomach aches and cramps and all that, right? I always recommend that if you are taking an antibiotic to take probiotics to make up for that. Dr. Chen, quick question. Can, can you make your probiotics stronger so they don't die that easily? Can you make your probiotics stronger? <laughs> what is the best source of probiotics, guys? Does anyone know? Does anyone know the best source of probiotics? Let's go over a, a list toward the end of our lecture here. I'm going to go over a list of 10 probiotic foods you can eat. Right? Rather than taking a probiotic pill... I'm going to go over a list of, of 10 probiotic foods. Does that sound good? Fermented food, right? Yes, a lot of it's fermented foods. We can go over that list together, okay, uh, with that. So I heard a question. Yes. <laughs> so Alex says probiotics are great after the fact. Um, yeah, but it shouldn't be after the fact. It should be during any time you're taking an antibiotic. You should be taking probiotics uh, with that. So, did you know that if you destroy the good bacteria on your wall by shooting arrows at it, the arrows of sugar, the arrows of preservatives in the food, right? The arrows of junk food, the arrows of red meat. When you weaken your wall, 
the bad guys, the bad bacteria that is outside your wall gets to break through the wall. Gets to break through the wall. Your wall gets breached. Your wall gets breached because the lining of the wall is no longer protected. When the lining of the wall is no longer protected and the wall is breached and the bad bacteria gets through, what do we call that? Does anyone know? What do we call that? When the wall is broken and the bad guys get through. What do we call that? We call it leaky gut syndrome. <laughs> we call it leaky gut syndrome because our gut is now leaky, right? It's allowing bad things to go through. Now you guys know what leaky gut syndrome is, don't you? <laughs> right? We call that leaky gut syndrome. That's all it is. And when the bad guys go through, right, and it's leaking through the wall, what is standing behind the wall protecting it? What is standing behind the wall protecting it? What did I mention was behind the wall waiting for the bad guys to come through? Type in the chat box if you know that answer. Your immune system is behind there. Remember how I said 70% of your immune system is in your gut? Your immune system is behind the wall, protect, waiting for things to leak through, right? Good morning, Rachel. Good to see you here. Miss you, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel's one of my uh, uh, memorial care patients. <laughs> so, yes, Twee, that's correct. Right? Your immune system is standing behind the wall waiting for things to go through. And so when the bad guys go through the wall and the immune system sees it, what happens? The immune system will attack anything leaking through. Right? The immune system will attack anything leaking through and during this fight this battle this war between the stuff that's leaking through your gut and the immune system that's fighting it what is created as during the attack during this war between the immune system fighting things that are leaking through what is created does anyone know inflammation that's absolutely correct. Inflammation is created. Anytime the immune system is fighting something, right, whether it's a bacteria or a virus or a fungus or sugar or preservatives or stuff that shouldn't be there, right? Anytime your immune system is fighting something, it attacks it and it creates inflammation. Let me ask you this, guys. Is inflammation a good thing or a bad thing? Is inflammation a good thing or a bad thing? Type uh, in the chat box. <laughs> right? Jose says bad. Alex says inflammation. Margie says bad. Right? Is inflammation a good thing or a bad thing? Well, how many of you guys have had a fever before from having the virus? Like a flu virus? Right? Judy says it's a warning light. Yes, yes. So anytime we have like the flu, we get a, one of the first symptoms of the flu is a fever. Right? One of the first symptoms of the flu is a fever. Or maybe in, in Crystal's case, Crystal, did you get a fever with coronavirus? Did you get a fever, Crystal, with coronavirus? Anytime, anytime our immune system attacks the bad guys, it creates inflammation in this battle. So inflammation is a fever, right? That's simply inflammation. Your body heats up from the battle. And so a fever is not necessarily bad, but what if you had this fever every day of the month, right? What if you had a fever every day of the month? Is that good or bad, right? Bad. Bad, that's right. So what's bad, guys, is 
chronic inflammation, long-term inflammation is what's bad. Okay, long-term inflammation is what's bad. It's like going into a battle, going into a war, and having friendly fire. Having friendly fire. Right? You're trying to shoot the bad guys, and you're actually shooting the good guys. That is chronic inflammation. That is when your body harms itself. Did you know that most diseases that we have today, right? Most diseases that we have today is related to inflammation one way or another. I mean, think about arthritis, right? Arthritis is simply inflammation of your joints. There are all types of arthritis. There's, uh, there's gout, there's psoriatic arthritis, there's rheumatoid arthritis, there's osteoarthritis, right? All types of arthritis, but one cause behind it. Inflammation, right? Inflammation is behind all the arthritis. Think about other health conditions we have. Um, for example, your, your lungs, right? Your lungs. What are some conditions of the lungs that you can think of? You guys on Zoom, what are some conditions of the lungs that you can think of? Like uh, maybe asthma. Yeah, asthma. Okay, asthma. Asthma is simply inflammation of your lungs, right? Asthma is when your immune system doesn't like something it's been exposed to, such as cold-induced asthma, exercise-induced asthma. So it creates inflammation that that lines your your bronchial tubes that creates mucus and that mucus causes you to start wheezing so wheezing is simply a sign of inflammation of your lungs from asthma or copd is inflammation of your lungs right pneumonia yes alex pneumonia is uh inflammation as well right the the majority of folks who die from coronavirus they die from inflammation of their lungs. They die from an overreactive immune system trying to fight coronavirus. And the immune system overattacks the lungs and creates inflammation. We call it cytokine storm is the name that we use. Cytokine storm of the lungs, right? And, uh, and so, so when that happens, your lung floods up with inflammation. Your lung drowns in inflammation. And, and Crystal can probably chat about this, right? Going through and surviving coronavirus uh, for like a week, right? You, you felt, you know, one of the symptoms I think you had, Crystal, you mentioned to us was like shortness of breath, having trouble breathing. It's because of all the inflammation that goes in her lungs from coronavirus. And the inflammation is simply from her immune system trying to attack a virus that it doesn't understand. It's a new virus, right? And so for many folks who don't survive coronavirus, they don't survive because of inflammation that grounds the lungs. Making sense so far, guys? Yeah. So why is all this important when it comes to leaky gut syndrome? is because leaky gut syndrome results from having a weak gut wall, right? And having a weak gut wall is because we, we, the, the, the owners of our factory, which is the gut, right? The, the owners of our gut factory, we unintentionally destroy our gut wall. Sugar red meat, pesticides, antibiotics, hormones, preservatives, right? The stuff we eat, the stuff that we feed ourselves destroys our wall. When the wall is destroyed, when the wall is destroyed, the bad guys go through. When the bad guys go through, the immune system attacks it. When the immune system attacks it, we create inflammation chronically, long-term, because, because it's the American diet, right? This is why leaky gut syndrome is a problem. 
it leads to chronic inflammation, which leads to chronic problems with our health in general, right? Why do you get a rash when you have, you know, gluten sensitivity? Why do you get a rash when you are like a celiac sprue, right? We get a rash because it is a response to inflammation because stuff is leaking through, right? Gluten sensitivity, celiac sprue, right? Allergies to peanuts, right? All these different things. The rash is simply inflammation. That's all it is. It's the immune system because of a leaky gut. Pretty crazy, isn't it, right? When you think about it. Crystal says, I had pain pneumonia with coronavirus. Uh, your WBC, white blood cell count went down. Inflammatory markers uh, improved. Uh, still recovering after two months. Yes. Crystal, would you be interested in coming on with me sometime on Facebook Live and sharing your story? I would love to have our folks here uh, chat with somebody who is a COVID survivor and who was hospitalized uh, in the hospital because of it, uh, in the ICU and all that. Um, well, let me know if you're interested, Crystal. If you are, I'll bring you on tomorrow <laughs> at 8 a.m. <laughs> and, and we can chat about it and, and banter back and forth about coronavirus and and your experience in the ICU with coronavirus. Uh, so that, uh, yeah. But anyway, leaky gut syndrome. That is leaky gut syndrome. We destroying our guts through our nutrition, destroying the gut wall as a result of it, creating inflammation from the immune system, attacking the bad things that leak through. That is leaky gut syndrome. More Americans have it than they realize. I'm sure more Canadians have it than they realize. Uh, we just don't call it leaky gut syndrome when we're walking around. But it is the cause behind many conditions. Did you know that there is a link between Alzheimer's and gut health? Did you know that there is a link between depression and gut health? Did you know there is a link between autism and gut health, right? And so even in Alzheimer's, we uh, so we do clinical research where I'm at, right? I'm sitting at the uh, Alzheimer's Orange County building, uh, part of Irvine Clinical Research. And, and one of the interesting studies that, uh, that uh, we're bringing on is really neat. It is a medication that we have that we're bringing on that is designed to improve gut health. And it's an, it's an Alzheimer's clinical trial that we're bringing on. But the, the mechanism of action, the way it works, is to improve gut health, guys. That's a clinical trial at my office here with that. Isn't that crazy? That's a clinical trial at my office that we're bringing on. If, by the way, if you guys are interested in that, just contact me. Uh, you can contact me through Facebook or you can email me um, to learn more about that for a video chat that we do. I'll put in my email here uh, for you guys who don't have it. And you can email me if you're interested in learning about gut health and Alzheimer's uh, and the clinical trials that we do with that. Uh, this is my email. And I'll put it in the chat box as well for you guys. Let me type in my email here uh, if you're interested in learning more about gut health and Alzheimer's because it is a clinical trial that we are bringing on. Um, you can just email me if you're interested in learning more. It is a clinical trial that we are bringing on to improve gut health for Alzheimer's treatment. So crazy when you think about it, right? How is it Alzheimer's related to your gut? But it is uh, with that. And so, so Crystal, yeah, I'll chat with you after this. But if you are available at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, uh, I would love to interview you live on uh, Health Talks with Dr. Trim. Uh, just let me know if you're available at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. We will go on live interview with Health Talks with Dr. Trim here so, uh, so that we can uh, chat to a, uh, someone who was in the ICU because of coronavirus. And you guys can answer all the questions you want. Like, is it fake news? Is it real? 
is it gonna go away uh, <laughs> with that and, uh, and she can tell you all the symptoms she's had um, so uh, let me know crystal if you can do that so gut by the way how many of you guys know that this thing keeps popping up how many of you guys know that depression is going up in the United States that the rate of depression is climbing in the United States. How many of you guys have heard that we have an epidemic of depression and anxiety going on right now? Well, obviously with coronavirus, right, that's going to happen. But even before coronavirus, the rate of depression has been going up like this, guys. Straight up, right? It's been like, it's like the mental pandemic, right? It's like the mental epidemic depression in the United States. Over the years, this diagnosis is just being made more and more and more. More people are getting depressed, anxious, uh, panic, anxiety, things of that sort uh, with that. Let me ask you a question real quick, and, and this is going to bring it home for you guys before we close. What is the neural transmitter in the brain? What is the neural transmitter? And oh, very cool. All right, Crystal, you're on with me live tomorrow at eight o'clock. <laughs> I'll send you a Zoom link later, Crystal. Uh, and then just click on that Zoom link um, before eight, like around eight o'clock or two minutes before eight o'clock. We'll go on live for a, a chat. Yes, the suicide rates uh, for young adults and teens uh, are going up as well with that. What is the neural transmitter in the brain that is related to depression? Does anyone know? What is the neural transmitter in the brain that is connected to depression? The, the hormone in the brain that is connected to depression. That if you don't have enough of it, you get depressed. What is the neural transmitter that if you don't have enough of it, you get depressed? Dopamine? Uh, not dopamine. Uh, close, though. Dopamine is... Uh, helps with your pleasure uh, center of the brain. So it does help with pleasure, but not dopamine. Have you guys heard of serotonin? Serotonin. I'll, yes, Margie, serotonin. That's right. The lack of serotonin. Oh, no, Crystal can't do tomorrow. She has work. Okay, next week. Uh, within this week. Okay. We'll find a time, Crystal, that we'll do it, and then we'll let everyone else know, okay? So the lack of serotonin, the lack of serotonin leads to depression. That's right. Which is why the majority of our antidepressants, which is why the majority of our antidepressants are serotonin reuptake inhibitors. What they do is they boost the serotonin levels in your brain, right? Like, uh, have you guys heard of Prozac? Have you guys heard of Paxil, right? Right, these antidepressants that we take, that Americans pop all day, right? And I prescribe all day. All they do is they boost your serotonin level. They boost your serotonin level, neurotransmitter in the brain. Now, my one last teaching point for you guys here, since we're uh, almost an hour up here. My one last teaching point is, where is serotonin made? Where is serotonin made or produced? Does anyone know? <laughs> Judy, Margie, you guys are too smart. Alex says, I prefer my CBD. Sounds good, Alex. <laughs> Alex is called the CBD man in Canada. And uh, he's very good with CBD, if you wanted information about CBD. So 90%, 90% of serotonin is made in your gut. It's crazy. 90% of serotonin is made in your gut. Good bacteria is required to make it. <laughs> uh, 
90% of serotonin is made in your gut. So if we are all walking around with leaky gut, killing off our good bacteria, destroying our gut lining, what are we not making? What are we not making, right? This is why there's a pandemic epidemic of depression over the years. Does that make sense? How your gut is so important and how we create our own leaky gut with our lifestyle. Right? 90% of serotonin. Just Google it, guys. Google where is serotonin made, right? Just do Google search. Where is serotonin made? 90% is made in your gut. Leaky gut syndrome leads to depression, Alzheimer's, chronic diseases, arthritis, all the chronic diseases we have. It all begins in our gut. It all begins in our gut. Hey guys, um, I was going to go over the, the 10 foods that uh, are probiotics, but we're out of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my email and uh, just email me if you want the list of the 10 foods. Uh, just shoot me an email if you want a list of the 10 foods. Okay, let me put in my email in uh, the chat group here. And at uh, just email me if you want a list of the 10 foods. Everyone got e everyone see email in uh, the chat box. You can just email me. And so, yes, a uh, epidemic of depression, an epidemic of Alzheimer's, an epidemic of chronic diseases. It all starts in our gut. It all starts in our gut. With that. All right, guys, did you learn something today? <laughs> Jose, what do you want to say about Memorial Care? Thank you for sponsoring uh, my lectures. No, thank you for, for, for coming on. It's uh, very interesting. Uh, I think I'm going to throw away my large barbecue chicken pizza I had for uh, <laughs> scheduled for lunch. <laughs> no need uh, any leaky gut here. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you so much, Dr. Trin. I really do appreciate all your support, um, and I'm sure everybody else does too. A uh, little bit about Memorial Care. Uh, for those that are turning 6 to 5, open enrollments around the corner. Uh, it's cool. from October 15th through December 7th. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be a lot of good changes out there with the health plan, so I, I encourage everyone mm -hmm. uh, that's already on a Medicare plan uh, or jumping into Medicare, not sure what plan to, to, to choose, uh, do a plan comparison. Uh, you can go on our website. You can give me a call. Uh, my cell phone number. Uh, I'll go ahead and type that on. Uh, mm -hmm. Type it on the on the message. Mm -hmm. And uh, wait, hold on. I can't multitask. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so especially right now because of COVID, all the social security offices are closed. Mm. Um, so a lot of people are having difficulties in, in you know, applying for the Part B and Part A. So uh, I'll be more than happy to walk you through that. And any questions, concerns, anything about Medicare or Memorial Care, uh, please give me a call or, or shoot me an email. All right, guys. We're, um, we're going to be uh, doing another Memorial Care chat, I think, next Tuesday. We're alternating yep, next Tuesdays Tuesday. and Wednesdays. And, and that's going to be on Food is Medicine. Food is Medicine is next week. And then uh, tomorrow I'm coming on at 8 o'clock here live uh, with our typical uh, – Health Talks with Dr. Trin with OC Talk Radio. We're going on radio every Thursday morning. Oh, uh, Dr. Trin, before we log off, yeah. uh, I also want to introduce Judy Osuna. I just saw her. Cool. <laughs> hey, her Judy. Video go on. Yeah, she's with uh, Alzheimer's Family Center. Hey, Judy. Good to see you. It's so nice to see you. This is a wonderful talk, Dr. Trin. Thank you, Jose. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. yeah. Join us anytime. And, uh, yes, I will. All right, guys. Take care and God bless. Talk to you later. Thank you, Dr. Okay. See you guys later. Thank you, Jose. Bye.